what's up YouTube welcome back to my channel today I wanted to do a tutorial on how I make my custom content clothing um, I know this is not the first and probably not the last tutorial you'll see on marvelous designer and blender but this is just the way I do it I've watched a lot of different tutorials and taken bits and pieces from each one and came up with a method that works for me so I know this will work for other people it's really simple so the first thing that you'll need is Sims 4 Studio in order to get the clothing into the game Marvelous Designer I have Marvelous Designer 9 I'll leave a link in the description below for that you'll need Blender 2.79 and then you'll also need 2.70 so links for those will be below as well finally you'll need photo editing software I use Photoshop just because it's easy for me other people may use GIMP or paint.net um, any of them work we're just gonna make a simple shirt today and hopefully this works for you if you have any questions just leave comments below and yeah here we go okay so first what you want to do is open the avatar I have one from Plastic Sims. Uh, you can get them kind of anywhere, but I can leave a link to the video I got mine from. And it brings up the avatar that you use in Sims 4 Studio. If your scroll button moves backwards, you can go to your user settings, view controls. And as you can see, direction, it says forward now because I've changed it, but it's always set to backwards. So it may make your scrolling weird or your zooming weird and confuse you. Um, so I always fix that first. And then of course you can move your avatar around with your mouse buttons. Um, weirdly, I don't know why I have to hold alt when I'm holding the mouse button down to drag or to pan around the screen. Um, all right, so the polygon tool is what you use to make your sewing pattern. And with Marvelous Designer 9, you can start with half a pattern and edit both sides to make it symmetrical. So I use that. Basically, you just start with one half of the pattern. And then once that loads up, you edit your curves for your neckline and sleeve hole. And then you can select the side that you want to unfold. I just wanted to edit that there. Bring that out some. Click the side that you want to unfold and for me I had to hold shift and then right click to get the menu to come up so once I did that you hit unfold symmetric editing and it makes the other half but it also makes it to where you can edit both sides by editing one side so it makes it easier and quicker to sew and to edit your pattern to make the back side of the pattern, I just copied it and did mirror paste. And I placed the pattern piece pretty much next to the, the front one. Now on the other side where the avatar is, you do have to still flip it around and then place it where you want it to go for sewing. So you place it behind the avatar and that's good enough there. Now you grab your sewing tool and click the points that you want to connect. Once you do one, it edits the other side because of the symmetrical editing. Hit the simulate button and um, your shirt will fall into place. Unfortunately, mine did not, so I had to use the hand tool and pull the shirt to where I wanted it to go. I wanted this to be a crop tank top, so um, it's short now, but I have to make it longer so I can scrunch it. I want it to scrunch at the bottom. But first what I do is at least get the shirt onto the avatar so I can see how it lays. I wanted to bring the back neckline up because usually the back of the shirt, the neckline isn't as low as the front. Now once I've done the back neckline, I need to bring the bottom of the shirt down. So I selected all of it on both patterns so I can do it at the same time. And again with the symmetrical editing, it makes it easy to even take in the sides at the top because it does it on the other side for you so it's even. I had to edit the shrinkage weft to make the shirt tighter. 
which you can do on the right hand side there and it just makes the shirt fit better also the particle distance i start at a 15 instead of a 20 it makes the distance between the faces of the vertices smaller and they kind of fit together better it makes for less clipping on the actual stem and i make the neckband to have the different sections so that it matches up with the sections of the pattern for the top it makes the sewing part easier and of course the neckband is way too large right now but i just did that so i could get it on there and fix it once it's attached once I get the front on, I had to bring back the neckband to the back of the shirt so that it wouldn't connect weird when I sewed it. Once I realized the neckband wasn't moving, I just went ahead and sewed it together. I figured it would just move once I sewed it, so don't mind my struggling. <laughs> when you're sewing the pieces together, make sure that the lines going from one piece to another are straight um, and not crisscrossed around. Um, so that you can make sure that the piece gets sewed on straight and when you do this make sure to connect the ends of the neck band together or you'll have that split in the side i like to make the shirts look as realistic as possible even if once i put the texture on it you can't really see it sometimes you can so i make sure to put the neck band on there i don't do the sleeve hems or anything like that but at least the neck band i do also once they're connected what you want to do is make the tips of the neckband going at an angle on each side so that when they connect the top part is smaller than the bottom part and that'll keep the wrinkling down on the neckband itself once you get the fit to the shirt how you want it go to the uv editor on your top right side and make sure all your pieces to your pattern are not overlapping and you just want to place them however you see fit for you because once you put them into blender that's how they'll show up for the uv map Again, you don't want them to overlap or it'll be difficult to pull them apart once you get into Blender. Once you do that, save the project so that if you need to come back to it, you can. And then you'll export as an OBJ. Save the garment with the name that you want. I use the tutorial tank and tutorial folder um, just to make it easier to find everything. Organization is key when you're making custom content for The Sims. Um, and then once you get to the save menu, select all patterns, single object, unweld, thin, unified UV coordinates, and make sure it's on meters and not millimeters. This is very important. If it's on millimeters, when you get into Blender, your garment will be huge and it'll float above the avatar. Don't do that. Once you're done with that, you go into Sims 4 Studio to start the creation of your mesh. Under the cast button, you click create 3D mesh and it actually click where it says cast. Once all the products load up, it's easier if you go to base game, but you don't really have to. You can pick the gender, age, and part type. It makes it easier to sort. I usually use nude or I'll use salmon i'll type in salmon and there will be a little this top right here this um, pink sleeveless top so this is the one i'm gonna choose once you choose your top you'll save as and this is what you're gonna save your actual cc product as or a garment or custom content piece so again i'm gonna save it as tutorial tank and then it'll open up it'll open up the avatar with the the piece on that you chose I don't know why with this version of Sims 4 Studio the avatars have no feet I don't know <laughs> but it doesn't affect once you put it in the game and if you choose a shoe it shows up you'll go to meshes for now and you click export mesh so this is very important you need to make a folder for meshes and you'll find out why later in this video as we go along but for now um, once you make that folder, you'll save this as nude mesh. And then once that saves, you're going to hit export mesh again. And you're going to save it a second time, but you're going to name it example mesh. Once you save that, it'll probably pop up in a folder. Just X that out and jump into Blender. Um, 2.79 is the one you'll start in. You'll go to file, open. 
and you'll open the nude mesh. If you don't know the controls, um, there are a lot of videos on how to move everything around, but I like to set up my, my uh, workstation. You hit in to make that side menu go away and I just like to widen everything and I'll name my nude mesh, nude mesh, just so that it's easier to find later on. And then I also like to delete the pink part. So you'll go into the, um, the texture, not the diffuse map, but the texture. And you'll click on diffuse map 001 and hit the X and delete it. That'll just get you back to the avatar. It's less distracting. And then you'll be able to tell it apart from the example. Now you'll import the shirt you made. You'll go to import wave front obj and click on the obj file for the shirt that you created and as you can see it's in blender the way that you made it in marvelous designer and it has the wrinkles in it just how i wanted them it's kind of hard to see because it's bright but if you want to change that you can go to the diffuser or the diffuse and then you can Play around with that drop down right here. The shader model. I like to bring it down a level just so I can see the different shades of the top. And then also when you bake it, it will give you more detail. So once you choose a setting that fits for you, um, we'll get to the fun part. Now you'll hit tab to go into edit mode or you can just click the little menu below the avatar. To move your UV pieces, you'll just hit G and then move the mouse to where you want it and click when you're done. To make it smaller, you hit S for scale. And again, just drag the mouse, so you'll kind of get the hang of it. Wanna go over to the upside down triangle and you'll go down to UV maps and you'll turn the first one into UV underscore zero and you'll add another one and make it UV underscore one. Then you'll go to file and append and get your example mesh, click object and then studio mesh and append. Then you'll go down and you'll delete the bone bone zero one. You'll delete the rig zero zero one and then you can change the name of it to example so you can find it easier. Once you do that, make sure your mesh is back on UV zero. And hit tab again to go back into edit mode while you're on your tutorial tank. What we're gonna do now is make modifiers and you're gonna go to add modifier data transfer. Once you have that open, the example mesh will be the source object. Make sure you click the nearest face interpolated and check the face corner data make sure you click the UVs button it has to be blue and change them to UV1 and UV1 make sure face data is checked at the bottom as well I don't bother anything else and hit apply and make sure you're not in edit mode when you do this or it's not gonna work go to object mode and then hit apply Now you'll know you've done this right when you go back to your UVs and it's, um, when you click on the UV one and go into edit mode, you'll see that your mesh has a weird shape to it. Almost like it's stretched out. Save it. So you're gonna save this as a new mesh. This mesh you're gonna name whatever you want to, but I usually save it at this point as data transfer, just so I know what step I completed. This is important so that if you mess up anywhere in Blender, you can go back to the previous point without losing everything else that you did. Now you're gonna go back to UV zero so that you can set up the UV map for baking. So go back into edit mode to where you see your shirt pieces. Hit open at the bottom, templates, and then um, base template. If you get the file that I got, um, that's the folder to be in. But if you download it some other way, just save it so where you can remember. And this is a shirt, so you can only put it in the green section where it says top. 
I usually size the top down to where it fits down on the right side as you'll see. Again, you hit S and then you move your mouse to the size that you want it to be and click. Hit G and move. If you wanna select just one pattern piece at a time, you can just hit L while the mouse pointer is hovering over that piece and it'll select it. So you just kind of move the pieces where you want them to go. And you may have to change the size of them a few times, but after a while you'll get the hang of it. It's not gonna be so hard to do. I like to zoom all the way in so that I can make sure no pieces are overlapping and they have enough spacing between them, but also they are big enough where I can get a good detail on them. All right, now once you have the pieces where you want them, you'll go down to the bottom and hit the plus sign, and then you'll make the sizing. This is for your back file. So if you want a high quality, um, you'll make it 2048 by 4096. Gives you more detail. Then you're gonna go to the camera, ambient occlusion. You'll select everything you see on the screen here. Change the margin to two, make sure clear and normalize their check. And then you're gonna hit bake. I usually like to do this while it's in object mode and it's not selected and then you'll see it show up as it's baking. Once it's done baking, you'll hit image and then you'll save the file as a PNG and you can name it whatever you want, but I just leave it as baked. Now jump into Photoshop and or any photo editor and you'll open your baked file. This is the time where you'll select the pattern pieces that you baked onto the document. And you can overlay a pattern, a color, or whatever. Um, for me, I like the detail of a, like a texture. So first I copy the base layer and I lock it and make it not visible that way. I always have a backup if I mess up. So I'll do all the work on the copy layers. I select the pieces, but then I also make the selection bigger than the actual pieces by a pixel or two. So I hit expand. What this will do is when I put the color on, if there's any gaps between the pattern pieces, you won't see them because there's extra color um, to fill those gaps. So once I do that, I make an extra layer for the texture. I do name these. Um, so I'll make that layer the texture layer and that's the base layer so that I know what's on each layer because they're hard to see sometimes. Then I make another layer for the color. I go back to the texture layer while it's still selected. And at this point, you can either go to file open and go to whatever folder of textures you have saved. If you have pictures saved from Pinterest, uh, fabric swatches, or however you save them. Um, but what I do is turn those swatches into a pattern stamp so that I don't have to just overlay. I'll go down to my stamp tool and I'll choose the save stamps of textures that I have here and choose the one that fits the shirt. I want the one that makes it look like a rib tank top, like the tank top with the lines going vertically. So I chose the one that best fit it and began to brush it on kind of like a Photoshop brush. And you want to make sure you get every piece of it and there's no white spaces because they do show up. At this point, I know it's covering up the detail and the shading, but we'll fix that. So once you have your pattern all done or that you've colored it all in and gotten all the edges, what you'll do is you'll go over to the blending options. And I like to choose darken or multiply because they show the shading and they kind of blend it together. Um, this one was a little dark, so I had to lighten it. Uh, Cause I wanted to make a white tank top. I didn't want to make it too hard once I got the color on. So now I go to the color layer, pick my color and brush it on. Well, sometimes you can use the paint bucket for this, but sometimes it's easier to use the paintbrush. 
again you want to make sure you get all the edges and everything because um, any gaps will show once it's in blender and in game as well once i got the white on you can do the same thing you can either choose the blending options that help kind of change the way it looks but there were none that i wanted to use for the white i ended up just turning the opacity down a little bit to where it was a little more see-through once that color is where you want it, you just want to save it as another file. I usually just save it as whatever color it is that I made the swatch. So I'll just add white in there and space. Now back into Blender 2.79 and we're going to add this texture to the actual shirt. So make sure it's selected and we'll go to the texture. You'll hit new. And you'll go down to open and we're going to find the file, open it up and it'll add it right to the shirt. And you can see the little lines for the texture. And you can see the neck band is a little different. You can see the fold details in there with the shading. So it looks pretty good. It looks how I wanted it to. Once that's done, we're gonna do what's called flipping the normals. So first what you have to do is make sure that the button is selected where, um, down here where once you select it on one side, it's selected on the avatar as well. And then you pick the pieces that you would be most likely to see. You select the part of the shirt that you'd be most likely to see at a different angle up under the shirt. Because sometimes when you turn your sim to the side, the inner parts of the clothes disappear that's because they haven't flipped the normals so i don't flip the entire thing because sometimes that can make a uh, slower loading time in sims 4 studio if there's too many vertices or faces so i select only the parts that i'm liable to see in the game if i turn the sim to another angle so at this point it'll just be the top of the shirt the neckline and the bottom of the shirt And to select pieces like this or to select parts of your uh, garment like this, you just hit C and it'll, it's going to bring up the circle tool and you can use the left mouse button to select or you can click your scroll wheel on the mouse to deselect any parts of the mesh. Also, you can hit B for the box tool and then you can select a box or a rectangular shape. Once you're done, you'll just hit the right click button or you'll just click the right mouse button and it'll take you out of the selection tool so that you can do something else. In this, in this instance, once you click it, you're gonna take your mouse and hover it over into the blue area above the avatar and hold shift and hit the letter D on your keyboard. What this is gonna do is duplicate the vertices that you just selected on the shirt. Once you've done that, you hit the space bar on your keyboard and you can type in flip normals and enter. And that'll flip your normals. And then if you go out of edit mode and you can see the shirt, you can zoom in and see on the inside where we copied the pieces. You can see the texture of the shirt. That's what you'll see in the game if you ever turn your sim to a different angle so it doesn't disappear. Once we've done that, I'd like to save another blend file as flip normals so that I know that's done. Now what we're going to do is go into Blender 2.70 to transfer the weight of the example mesh. So what you do is first you go into weight paint at the bottom. So click example, shift click on tutorial tank and go over to transfer weight. And it should say all nearest face all. Once that's done, save another copy of your mesh as weight paint. And I saved it. Now the only thing we have to do is delete the example and then join the new mesh with the tutorial. And that's going to put the arms and neck and stomach with the shirt. 
so that it works in game. Normally before I join, I'll delete any parts of the new mesh that's not gonna show on the shirt, but in this case, I don't even need to worry about that. So click the tutorial tank or click the garment that you made first and then shift click the nude mesh and then join. You want the finished product to say nude mesh or whatever you save the nude mesh as. You'll see um, once you go into white paint, the whole thing is blue showing that it's all connected and then you'll save it as done. And going into Sims 4 Studio, now we need to import the mesh onto the avatar. So hit import mesh, get your finished one open. It might take a minute to import, but once it does, it's gonna be brown. It's gonna look like this. Um, just check out the shape of it. And before I upload the other levels of detail or LODs, I like to go to texture and go ahead and put the, the texture on it so I can see what it looks like. Um, I delete the specular file because it still looks like the previous garment. Delete the shadow and then go to diffuse, import. And you'll import the baked white. And you can see that's what your top's gonna look like in the game. Um, and then I changed the swatch color, of course, to match that. Um, to match the top and go back to meshes and then go to LOD one import mesh and I import the same mesh for each one some people will make different meshes for each level of detail they'll um, make it to where it's I can't think of the word right now um, and they'll make it to where it fits each level of detail but you don't have to do that I upload the same mesh to each level of detail so once they're loaded up Go to the next one, import it again. I'm so sorry, I keep saying upload, it's import. <laughs> After the LOD3 is imported, I just like to go through all of them, make sure I didn't miss any, because sometimes you do. Um, LOD0, and then go to categories. This is very important. This is how it will be categorized in the game or if you use filters when you're looking for products when you're looking for pieces of clothing this is important so I change it to white make sure you click apply to all swatches after each selection because I always forget to do that like I just did for each category or option you change you have to click that I don't know why Alien is always deselected. I, I feel like Alien should be able to wear clothes too. So <laughs> I always select that. And then for the outfit type, it can be athletic. You know, I just try to pick the different categories that you could use it in. I don't really know what situation it is or what changes that. So apply. Color palettes, I, sometimes I don't feed too much into those. It's, it's not that serious. <laughs> it's not. I don't ever use that when I'm filtering clothes, so some people might, but fabric is cool. Archetype, I don't really, or archetype, I don't really do that one either, but the subpart type is very important because right now it's set as a bra. It's not one. It's a tank top, so you have to change that. And then this bottom part is very important. So I like to allow the parts for random. Some people don't. I like that because I like to hit the random a lot. Restrict opposite gender. For this, I will. And then restrict opposite frame. You keep open because you want to be able to use this for different body types. Save it. And it'll save as the original name. As you can see, it says tutorial tank. After you save it, you can close out. Don't forget to put it in your game. Don't forget to add this to your mods folder. And now we're in the game. As you can see, I use random a lot. <laughs> I had to pick a Sam um, so I could find the shirt. And first I had to find her some pants. Okay, whatever. So um, as you can see, here's the tank top here. And you can see the folds in it. You can see the texture. I don't have reshade or anything, so 
it doesn't look all fancy but you can tell with the detail you can see that with the different bust sizes there's no clipping which is good and now we have to check um, with the body sizes so I usually take it all the way up to the biggest one because that's when you have a lot of clipping and once you see when you take it up and see that there's no clipping you're good and that's pretty much it you can see that you know this shirt has no glitchy effects or anything the detail shows up nice and that's pretty much it it's simple it might take a little bit of time but it works and um, if you guys want to see more just comment below to, if you have any questions let me know um, and if you want to see more tutorials or if you want to see any more videos on marvelous design or anything like that um, I'll be making some more custom content soon so I'll make sure to record when I make some clothes and thanks for watching see you on the next one bye